Hey everybody. Uh, today we are going to do a little bit of maintenance. Actually we're going to do a lot of maintenance on my brackish tank and we are also going to work on my 20 long open top which is right next to my brackish tank. Now both these tanks are 20 long uh, open tops but I tend to have names for my tanks and my playlists accordingly. Uh, so this is my 20 long open top and this is my brackish. Now what we are doing is we are treating for cyanobacteria. I've been treating for the last two days uh, so it is time to do the big water change and see what kind of effect we've had. What I'm going to do in here today is not only the big water change but I'm really going to get in there and scrub. The glass really needs a good scrub down. Uh, the rocks if you can see uh, well let's see if we can see through the green a little bit there. You see how brown and nasty looking those rocks are and how much stuff is all over them, that growth? Uh, that's just, you know, that's a little too much growth for me. You can't even tell they're rocks anymore. They may as well just be lumps of brown stuff. Um, so I'm going to get in there and pull those rocks out. I'm going to scrub them down a little bit. I may or may not remove that piece of wood. At the very least, I'm going to pull it out and do a little bit of cleaning on it. I'm going to do a lot of vacuuming in there, etc. So hopefully this tank will look nice and pretty when I'm done with it. Uh, but once we're done, we're going to go ahead and hit it again with a second dose of treatment. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. I'll show you how to do it and what I'm using and so on and so forth. Uh, this tank is going to be similar. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get to it this evening. Hopefully I will. If not, I'll be doing it tomorrow. Uh, this tank does not need quite as much work. Uh, I am going to get in there probably if you see this Java right here that is attached to um, that piece of wood you can see the green slime just growing all over the roots of that this is after two days of treatment I still have that much green slime that still looks healthy and alive to me so I may just pull that piece of wood out may scrub that down and reuse it um, I may use a different piece of wood I do have one that's been sitting out and should be uh, bacteria free since it's been bone dry for several months now um, so we'll see what happens with that, but I am going to get in here and do a little bit of maintenance on this. This is just going to be a water change. I'm going to wipe the glass down uh, and then do a good filter change. I also want to get in here and remove all of the, uh, you can see the um, pothos plant I have growing in there. This stuff right here is just kind of hanging over the edge. The roots have grown down into the tank very thoroughly. And they have a lot of the uh, cyanobacteria and algal growth all over them as well. So instead of leaving them in there, they're not important to me. They just kind of serve their purpose. Uh, I have a great big pothos plant right there. So I will just take a few branches off of that, you know, cut a few trailers off of that and plop them in the tank and I'm done. And within a few days I will have root growth and within a few weeks I'll have, you know, tree-like root growth in there and I'll be able to just dispose of that. The pothos plant really really soaks the nutrients out of the tank um, but the roots also collect and hold on to a lot of cyanobacteria so I will be getting in there and doing a lot of that kind of maintenance on this tank so sit back and wait for me to get done some work and we will do some little bit of along the way kind of process stuff I'll show you what I'm using and then in the end we'll get some uh, looks at what these tanks look like after I've got them all cleaned up All right, here we are midway through the process. I've got one tank cleaned up and I'm getting ready to retreat it with my Ultralife Blue Green Slime Stain Remover. Uh, this is a very common product. It's easy to get. I get it on Amazon. It's about $15. Uh, what you get is this little bottle here. Let me see if I can pick this up without spilling it. Um, if you can tell or not, it is full of a pinkish, whitish powder. You mix two scoops for every 15 gallons of water. Mix it thoroughly. You don't want to put the powder directly in the tank, so we're going to just mix it up in the jug here. And then once it is thoroughly mixed, we're going to go ahead and pour it into the tank. Uh, the tank I've done so far is my 20 long open top. It is not the brackish tank. I'm kind of saving that for last because that's going to be a little more challenging. Uh, so far, this is what I've removed uh, from it. You can see that it's very dirty water. It is very tannin stained water and there is also a lot of vegetation in there. I did remove the pothos plant, I removed some of the floating water sprite, I've got so much of that water sprite um, it doesn't bother me to pull that out of there if it's got the sign of bacteria on it and it's contaminated uh, it's gone. So I'll be replacing that as well. 
I do have the piece of wood that was in there pulled out. I have that currently uh, right here in the sink. That is soaking in hydrogen peroxide to make sure I've cleaned that as much as possible. I'm going to scrub that down with one of my various uh, scrub brushes here. And then that will go back in the tank in a little while. And then uh, in case you're wondering, that is from my 40 breeder that I'm currently cycling. And if you will notice, I am now getting both... Um, nitrites and nitrates so I am well underway for cycling that tank so sit tight let me keep going and we will see what we get next alright everybody I know this might look like the after but it is not it is the during we're getting close to the after though i give you a little bit better look at it I have scraped and scrubbed and scoured and I've removed a lot of the um, plant material that was in here you can actually see what the wood looks like now it's very beautiful uh, I'm always torn by that that side of it looks wonderful but the underside of it has so much texture it's like a cavern for small fish and that's ultimately why I leave it upside down it is a very uh, good hiding place it provides a lot of uh, habitat for these little tiny gobies and even the shrimp uh, that are in there and I would imagine even the live bears could get inside that if they wanted. it's a very large structure uh, on the inside uh, those bubbles are not coming up out of the wood, by the way. I know it kind of looks that way, but that is just on the other side of the tank. And that's actually what I want to talk about. Uh, despite my scrubbing and all that stuff, the important thing we did was we retreated for the cyanobacteria with the um, powder I just showed you as we dissolved it into the water. We've mixed it back into the tank. Now, it's very important to keep an air stone in the water. Uh, the process that it is working, it's not a poison or uh, fungicide or algicide, anything like that. Not exactly sure how it works, but the process actually consumes oxygen out of your tank. It's, uh, it needs a lot of oxygen. So you need the air stone in the water. And despite what a lot of people may think, uh, air stones do not actually add oxygen. They simply provide much more um, circulation in your tank and that surface agitation actually equilibrates the atmospheric oxygen in your tank so as the tanks using it up very quickly you need a lot of circulation uh, to reincorporate oxygen from your atmosphere back into the tank so that's why you use the air stone and a perfect example of what I'm talking about is if you will look in the corner of this tank you see how those bubbles are actually trying to go back down uh, that's simply because the amount of water that's bubbling up right here is bubbling up and then it's flowing back down into the tank and of course here in the corner it gets trapped and those bubbles are trying to float but the current's pushing them down at the same time. So again it's not so much those bubbles in the water that are doing their thing, it is the amount of water that they are causing to move that is actually incorporating uh, the atmospheric air back into your tank. So this tank is also underway. We've done a good scouring and scrubbing and I've pulled things out and I've got the glass cleaned down. Uh, I've removed a lot of the plants, uh, removed the pothos plant. We have retreated. That's why you see the sort of almost foamy amount of water. You normally wouldn't see those that much bubbles on the surface um, of a tank with an air stone in it. But this because of the treatment we're giving it right now, that's why you get those extra bubbles. Uh, you can actually see the same thing happening here in the brackish tank. Now the salt in the brackish tank will actually add to that as well. Uh, so those are a couple key points to note that you will want to put an air stone in. Uh, you want a lot of circulation. This is not something that will harm your beneficial bacteria so you don't need to do anything special with your filter as you're treating. Uh, but you do treat for 48 hours and then you have to do like a nice tank cleaning, a big water change uh, and then get your tank started again. Now there's nothing in the instructions and no reason for me to believe that giving it a second dose is necessary. I always just feel better safe than sorry. This stuff's inexpensive enough. Um, I've gone through the hassle of getting an air stone out and putting it in the tank, which I hate seeing. So if it's got to be there for two days, I figure why not leave it there for four and I just do a double back-to-back -back treatment and that allows me to get in there and really vac it a good second time. Uh, for these tanks that don't get a ton of maintenance on them and then that gives me kind of an excuse to get in there and really do a good vacuum and a good double water change and uh, get these tanks back up and looking nice again for a little while. So let me keep going and we will continue on with the next part and we will hopefully get to see what we uh, are going to look like with some more pothos plant added back into this tank. Alright everybody, there's your after. Now, I don't have a whole lot more to talk about as far as this process is concerned, but I do want to have a few final closing thoughts here. Uh, I do want to make it clear that 
what I'm dealing with in these tanks is more of an outbreak rather than just having cyanobacteria in the tank. Almost everybody probably has cyanobacteria in their tank. Uh, it's only when conditions are right that you will have an overgrowth or an outbreak of it where you actually start to see the sheets of it growing on things and you have pockets of heavy infestation, etc. So from time to time I have to get into this tank and do a good thorough cleaning like we've just seen. But I did not really address any of the root causes, or at least not most of them. Um, the reason I believe I've gotten the algae and cyanobacteria in this tank and the brackish tank so badly is because of the lighting I had on it. For the longest time I had very, very low quality LEDs that were basically repurposed and never meant to be over top of a fish tank. Um, I've shot video, as I've mentioned, about why this impacts the algal growth and cyanobacteria growth. I'm not going to go into that now, but suffice it to say that with the lighting being changed over uh, that I have on this tank now, I'm hoping that now that I've done this big treatment, I will not get such a rapid uh, regrowth of all of the unwanted type growth I have in the tank. Again, I don't mind some algae, I don't mind some cyanobacteria. To me, that just looks like a good, natural, healthy underwater environment. It's when it overgrows that I have issues. So. What I want to make very clear is I have not addressed a lot of those issues. I have no intention of feeding my fish any less. I have no intention of reducing the stocking density in this tank. I'm not going to start keeping the lights on for several hours less per day, uh, etc. So this is all part of just how I have to maintain my tanks because I like a well-lit tank, because I like a heavily stocked tank, because I like to feed my fish a lot. So if you're watching my videos and you're seeing these heavily stocked tanks and you're seeing how nice they look or whatever and you think, oh, I can do that too, just, you know, you can just be mindful that it requires a lot more work. There's a lot more maintenance involved. You're going to have to sacrifice a lot of things like having cyanobacteria in your tank from time to time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't want to have this kind of high maintenance on your tanks, then you need to go with a more traditional stocking density, I'll say. I suppose that's a good way of saying a, a more lightly stocked tank. The stick closer to the one inch of fish per gallon of water rule and you won't have so much uh, tank maintenance that I do. So the brackish tank is no different. I have done the same amount of work in here. We've got that wood looking nice and clean. We've done the gravel vac. I've got the uh, treatment in there again. And in a few days we will be in there, in two days actually, we will be in there um, doing another big uh, water change and so on and so forth. I do want to point out that I have new lighting on this tank. I went from a very low quality LED just like the other one I was talking about that had been repurposed. Um, one of my very generous viewers donated me some money and I was able to use that to get this, uh, eh, it's not top of the line but it's a much higher quality uh, LED light strip that is actually designed for planted tanks so it provides me with a much much higher quality light spectrum uh, for the plant growth and provides less of the yellows and greens that the cyanobacteria and algae thrive on so hopefully with that little adjustment to both these tanks and with the major cleaning I've just done I will be on top of it enough to where I can go back to just doing normal levels of tank maintenance for me. Now I know that's a high level of tank maintenance compared to most people, but it's not this getting in there and scouring and scrubbing and treating with you know uh, products that I have to purchase and so on and so forth. It's just my normal um, water changes and when wiping the glass down and that sort of thing. So speaking of that, if you have sat through all of this, I will give you a little teaser. Today's project is going to be the T-bar tank. Not doing a whole lot in there, but the glass always grows this terrible um, hair algae all over it. And you can see it's growing in there really good now. You can see where the currents of water are making it ripple and wave like a field of grain. Uh, it's kind of pretty in its own way. But I don't want that all over the glass. And it grows back pretty quickly in this tank too. Again, same reasons. I do a lot of feeding. I've got a lot of light in here. I've got a lot of nutrients in there. And then the result is I've got a lot of algae in there. So I'm going to wipe down the glass on that one and then you'll be amazed at how much better that tank looks from a simple glass wiping. And I may also get into my angelfish tank today and do a little bit of uh, gardening. I want to pull some plants that are in there out and I want to put some plants that are in my, in my um, 125 uh, into the angelfish tank here and just do a little bit of rescaping on the bottom there, a little bit of re-gardening, re replanting. 
So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I do a lot of these kind of videos. You never really know what you're going to get in them. I never really know where they're going to go when I start shooting them. Um, so if you're subscribed, you won't miss anything. And if you are subscribed already, thank you so much. Uh, I've really gotten a lot of subscribers lately, and I'm really, really just, you know, beside myself with gratitude. Thank you all, and uh, thanks for watching this one, and I will see you on the next one.